Hello, and welcome to another video from the only source of information that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy it. And today's video is going to be about bullying. I made a video uh, last week where I talked about how much I was bullied uh, because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, and since I started this this channel, I've found other people that I think are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they they're telling me that they experienced the same thing. And today we have with us Crystal, who uh, who has told me that well, when she was younger that she went through a system of bullying very similar to what I went through. So, uh, hello, Crystal. Hello. All right. So anyway, uh, yeah, one of my subscribers said that, you know, that he had experienced something like this and that he wanted me to go into greater detail about the, the cycle of bullying I've had to endure over the course of my life. And I don't know that I can give a whole lot more details about events. They're pretty terrible, but I think we could make a video about getting bullied with, you know, all the all the things we've experienced. Um, just for everybody who's out there to kind of get to know you, to uh, explain how you and I came to meet, how you found my channel. Okay. Um, there's a lot of Probably about 2014, it was 2013 when my dad found his channel and he started watching all of his videos and I would hear him playing them in the background while I was going about my day while I was living with him still. And I was thinking, wow, a lot of what this guy says actually makes sense. So then for a while I got stuck back into daily life. I wasn't too worried about my spiritual journey at all. And then 2015 came and that's when I had my awakening moment and I was pregnant with my son and I was playing for the truth and I stumbled across videos and I remembered this is the guy that I wanted to listen to his videos I never got a chance to so I kind of stuck <laughs> yeah I was you know I was thinking the other day whenever we were talking about we, you know people don't know but you and I have been trying to make this video for you know since yesterday but we've had technical difficulties so we're kind of both of us are going to know today what we're going to talk about because we've already done this. But I was thinking the other day when you were saying that about how your dad was listening to these, you know, my videos and, and he liked them, he believed in them and you were listening to my videos and you liked it. I've never had that. You know, I, never, I really never had any friends when I was in school. I always had one or two oddball people that were my friends. Yeah. But the only people I ever really had to talk to were my parents. You know, and neither of my parents is, you know, my mom and dad, both of them, you know, are good people, but there's no way that they would listen to me talk about the stuff I talk about, like with you. Yeah. You know? So I, I really, I think, you're, I don't know if I, I've told you before, you're very, very lucky that you, you've got the dad that you have and your sister too. You, you seem to be able to talk to your sister about this stuff too. Oh yeah. Yeah. It helps because. If I didn't have them, I wouldn't have had anyone. So it helps. It helps when you're not totally alone. Yeah. Well, when I, you know, uh, when I started this channel, I didn't really have any friends at all. Yeah. You know, so I was just isolated in my house. My family wouldn't even let me talk to anybody else. And, uh, and so it was, it was really a nightmare. And so now I'm super paranoid because I've got, um, uh, you and uh, uh, several other subscribers that I talk to on Skype, and it's like an addiction. Now I can't, I can't imagine. Like if all of y'all were to leave at one time, I I don't know what I would do, because I've I've already lived a life uh, of being isolated, and I can't go back to that now. Yeah, yeah, that would be tough, and I I can't, I have no experience with that because, like I said, I have I have my dad so <laughs> and my sister. Right. Yeah, I didn't have anything Gr growing up. I would try to talk to my best friends about things that are, that were important to me. But basically, it's like we we figured out that there's different kinds of people in this world. There's because Jesus even spoke about people that were spiritually empty and people that were spiritually full. But he, he also talked about the spiritually full ones as those who are filled with a, God's Holy Spirit and those who are filled with demons or wicked spirits. And so, you know, it's like 
uh, when you're sitting in a room full of spiritually empty people, I mean, you can talk about, you know, uh, stupid things that are in the news. Like you can talk about entertainment, like, you know, who was the sexiest, Marianne or Ginger, you know, uh, or you can talk about uh, the pandemic or you can talk about the war in Russia. For us, all of that is just nonsense. And I mean, sometimes even you and I can get into these conversations about things that are not important. Yeah. Just because we we want to interact with one another and it's it's a little bit fun. Yeah. But you're in a room full of people that that's all they can do. And you're one of us. That's like torture. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks being kind of different from everybody else. And in my age group, too, it's like I'm the only one in my age group or close to my age that thinks this way, like locally. Like everybody that I went to school with, I mean, they were pretty mean to begin with when we went to school with them. So I'd imagine that they're still the same shallow, mean people they've always been. Yeah, well, if you go back and look at the video I made it last week, I talk about like when I was on the first day of first grade, all the little boys beat me up. It wasn't like any of them didn't. They were all involved in it. And all the little girls stood around in, in a circle around them laughing while they were beating me up. And the teachers just stood around watching. So it was entertaining to them as well. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons I can't get too concerned about the junk that's in the news. You know, it's like, oh, isn't it terrible that the Russians are attacking you, the Ukrainians? And I'm thinking if I went to school in that, you know, in Ukraine, all the children there would have been beating me just like the children over here. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a very empathic person, em, uh, empathetic person. I really always am trying to fix everybody else's problems and, you know, make everybody else happy. But the reality is, you know, if you just follow it, use your brain and, and logically process the information. All those people that are that are all families, everything that are being bombed out of existence in the Ukraine. If I went to school in the Ukraine, those are the people that would have been standing around beating me up. Yeah. And so it, it doesn't make any sense for me to feel sorry for them. I mean, yeah. there wouldn't be any wars if no one would participate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, you know, I used to think that uh, like soldiers were the most evil people on earth. And uh, but it, they're not, you know, a soldier is basically just a plumber or a roofer or an electrician that has permission to commit murder. You know, you could basically take anybody, any civilian and tell them that they have permission to commit murder and they'll do it. Yep. And that's you know, here. Here's your uniform. Here's your gun. You know, and they'll just go out and do it. Yeah. And the only reason I even say that, you know, at one time I thought soldiers were the most evil people on earth is I used to be in the military yeah. and I was just a regular guy. I didn't want to kill anybody. But uh, whenever we were involved in any kind of combat, which I was just on an oil tanker, so I never was like shooting a machine gun or anything. But uh, we would be sent into these combat situations. Everybody would get excited. Yeah. They loved that because they knew they were going to get a medal. Me, I was, I was laying there scared to death. I was like, man, my whole ship is filled with murderers. <laughs> yeah, but, bullying, it, it, I think a lot of it stems from how kids were treated in their own home environment. Some people just can't help it. It's just the kind of person that they are. They're just a mean person in general. So well, I try not to work too much now. Because the things that I got bullied for were things that I couldn't change. It, I mean, whether it be genetics, I, I'm pretty sure it's because my jaw's not aligned because I can't chew on this side at all. My jaw's not aligned. Some stuff doesn't come out how I want it to, and it, I have a good way of hiding it usually, but. Right. Yeah. You said that I guess other people around you probably could, you know, they could tell that your speech was not the same as theirs. And so they would pick at it. You know, yeah, it's not something I could change. And I didn't go to like speech classes when I was a kid. Um, 
my dentist said something about breaking my jaw and getting aligned and stuff, but that never happened. I don't know whether insurance didn't cover it. Maybe mom and dad didn't have enough money, whatever. So I'm stuck with it. It's just me. I'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I always think that, you know, it's like uh, going back to what Jesus said about how there's people that are spiritually empty and sp- people that are spiritually full. Like if you're around a person that's demon possessed, and I I know for a fact that I I run into demon possessed people on a pretty regular basis, they instantly know who I am. It's like when they get close to me, they know they can feel God's presence and they just instantly go into this bullying thing without even knowing me, without having ever met me, don't know anything about me, they'll do that. But there was a thing that Jesus said uh, about when they asked him about the last days, and he's like, "Don't be confused, you know, deceived. I I didn't come here to bring peace to the world. I came to bring a sword to to put fa- set families against each other. So you your you're gonna uh, your parents are gonna reject you. Or, uh, your your children are gonna reject you. Your brothers and sisters are gonna reject you. And they don't have to be demon possessed to do that." You know, just like that little bitty thing that's different about your way of talking. Uh, if they're around you long enough and you're a, a actual righteous person, they're going to notice that you're not participating. That yeah. you don't care about who gets to be the president. You don't care about which football team has the best score. None of that stuff means anything to you. And you're going to stand out as odd. Yeah. And they're going to yeah. take that little character trait and attack you for it. Yeah, I don't. let well, like, I don't have Facebook. I deleted Facebook a long time ago, probably about the same time that I started watching new videos and started realizing that everybody on Facebook was just, like, in competition to who's living the best life instead of just being happy with where they're at in life and not trying to compete with everybody else. So I got sick of seeing that. Um, I got sick of the kids that I went to school with kind of, like, stalking me. So I, I just deleted it. I don't. I don't have it. My husband deleted it too. He don't, he doesn't care. He actually noticed like a good bit of his friends that he used to hang out with. Don't even communicate with them hardly anymore. They still have his number, but no one hardly ever calls them. He has a select few that still do, but I mean, he knows a lot of people He's out in public and <laughs> anywhere we go, someone's telling him hi and asking him how he's been and stuff, but they know they they would know that I don't fit in for sure. So I don't go out of my way to check like make new friends or anything. I have like one chick that I still talk to and she she's basically an NPC. I've tried explaining some stuff to her. And I love her to death. She's I can see that there's good in her, but at the same time she can't comprehend the things like we can so it's there's no sense in me even explaining so i'll still go hang out with her if i need to like get away if i'm stressed but aside from that i don't really open up to her too much and talk to her about anything definitely nothing spiritual because i know it's just gonna go over her head she ain't gonna comprehend it <laughs> yeah well you you've seen my friends before i guess i've had videos of like me and frosty together and videos of me and Tonto together. Tonto comes by the house every now and then. And uh, he was staying here like three days a week. Yeah. And I just couldn't put up with it because it was too much work and I, I wasn't able to get anything done. But I, I try to talk to, to Tonto and I, I can have those little conversations about who was the best, dra- played the best Dracula on TV or whatever. But, you know, anytime I talk about anything that's important, his eyes just glaze over, you know. And so I, 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 I crave that. I need it. I can't just talk about nonsense all the time. I have to be able to talk about things like love. To yeah. me, like, like I said in my videos, like I never had a friend before or I never had a girlfriend before. And so to me, I want to explore that. And I talk to other people who have had girlfriends, you know, and ask them, you know, what it's like and, and you know, that kind of stuff, because I want to know about reality. I'm not interested in the this, you know, who's at war with who. That stuff is doesn't affect me. You know, yeah. like right now, you know, I have no, no plans of going to Russia or the Ukraine. 
And if they start bombing America, well, that might be interesting. I've never been bombed before, you know, so I don't know. It might, especially if it's nuclear bombs, those are kind of interesting. <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd be, I'd want to stay as far away from the city as possible. I, I'm happy with where I live because I'll be sticking myself and I'll be okay with that. Cause that's what I usually do anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's the same here. You know, it's like uh, it would be interesting to watch. Uh, and I guess that if a, if a nuclear bomb actually dropped right on my house, I wouldn't hear it or feel it or anything, so I'd be okay with that, too. Now, I have a strong sense of, like, protection, too. Like, almost like I'm protected anyway. And if I'm not, hopefully the death will be quick. I'm not afraid of death, so it's not something that <laughs> bothers me. Well, it actually comes up a lot with me. It's like when you see these wars, like I was saying, those are the same people. The people that are killing, dropping bombs are the same kids, basically, that beat me up and laughed at me the whole time I was growing up. The people that are getting bombs dropped on them, they're just like them. They're the same people that would beat me up and laugh at me when I was little. And so you, but when that happens, you always wonder if there's somebody there that's experiencing this nightmare that's like us. You know, somebody who wouldn't be a bully. You know, somebody who maybe we went to school with that wasn't laughing while we were getting beaten. Yeah. You know, then you feel bad about it. But we don't we don't know that that ever happens. That, like say, you have a strong feeling that you're protected. I have that same feeling. And uh, there are scriptures in the Bible that talk about that. Like uh, God's people are different, that he, he's actually looking out for us. So, so that while Lord Satan's children are dropping bombs on one another, it's like we're as long as we're separate, like we don't get involved in any of that. It's like we're protected. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's how I feel. So. Yeah, well, I, I'll tell you, it would be nice if God would protect us from everything. Yeah. You know, just even the sense of loneliness that's that's hurt so bad for me that you know it's, it's almost like the worst thing that can happen to a person yeah. when when you were when you were growing up you said that you felt like you were bullied what all kind of stuff did uh, did you have to experience that you uh, that bothered you back then other oh. than just uh, the kids that would make fun of your your voice yeah um basically just the name calling um feeling like i didn't fit in because i didn't really fit in with anyone i could talk to the nerdy kids i could talk to like the preppy kids but i didn't want to be a part of all the preppy kids they were way more different than i was like i, I knew i didn't fit in there, so i didn't feel comfortable talking with them then you had the in-between people where they weren't completely on the bottom and on the top either. And I got along with the people that fit that group, but I still didn't feel like I fit in. Like I had a few friends, but it was like, I wasn't free to be myself because I just, I didn't fit in. It, it just didn't feel right. I hated school. I absolutely hated it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, tell you uh, this. Every kid, everybody that's out there, that may stumble upon this video is going to think that they were one of the kids that was bullied or that they didn't fit in because we all to some extent um, feel like we don't fit in. But I can tell you from watching people how they interact with one another. There's no one understands what I've been through, period. Yeah. Uh, if you go back to every kid I went to school with, the most oddest oddballs in my school were the kids that I still hang out with today. They're like mentally handicapped or there's something seriously wrong with them. But even those kids, like the, the people that I've done videos with, when they were in school, no one really bullied them. You know, they may have gotten bullied once in a while, like every five years or something. But I'm talking about where I would go to school and get bullied every single day, all day. All day long, I was just getting bullied, and and like guys like Tonto and and Frosty and 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 Rachel, 
that that rarely happened to them. I, I mean, they would talk. I would uh, get harassed because of the clothes I wore, or because of my glasses, or because of my uh, the way I walked or the way I talked. And I was a normal kid. I go back and look at pictures of me. My clothes were not that weird. You know, I, I didn't. I I was healthy. And and these other people like that that I hung out with, they were obviously mentally handicapped. You know, so it just really, really, it it just uh, the the explanation for why you and I got bullied, it doesn't hold up. No. They just bullied us because we were filled with the Holy Spirit. We were righteous people. We had a close relationship with God, and they could see it. You know, like the Bible says that that uh, Cain did not love his brother. He killed his brother, and he didn't kill his brother because his brother was a bad person he killed his brother because his brother was a good person yeah well since we've had so many diff technical difficulties in the last day or so probably we need to stop and just check and see if everything's okay and okay. just post this just post this sh short little video okay all right well um Hopefully, other people who are out there that watch my YouTube channel will recognize some of the stuff that that uh, Crystal and I are talking about as as similar to the stuff that they've ex that you've experienced. And uh, and we hope that if you are one of us, that you feel better knowing that there are people like us out there that you're not alone. And as always, if you don't want to survive, don't listen to us. Don't listen to us, Crystal, not just me.